about the multiplication. The multiplication of love, I would say. The multiplication of humbleness, of gentleness, of patience. The multiplication of bearing with one another. The multiplication of preserving unity in peace. You say, Father, I thought that today's gospel and today's first reading dealt about the multiplication of food. Why are you saying this about the multiplication of love, of humbleness, of gentleness, of patience, of bearing with one another, of preserving unity? Because that is what St. Paul is saying in today's second reading. If you notice in Paul to the Ephesians, he was telling them, he was exhorting them, he says, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. St. Paul really writes it's such a, such a, it's just great listening to these words of St. Paul. Because we know that Paul speaks from the heart. See, after having a, a strong conversion, now he sees everything clearly and he wants a multiplication of love in the world. How can we achieve that multiplication of love? See? Well, look at this as first reading from uh, the prophet, from the book of Kings, I'm sorry. We have the prophet Elisha in this town called Baal Shalisha. He's a man of God. He has 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the year. And Elisha says to his servant, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can we feed a hundred people with only 20 barley loaves? See, what happens? Elisha says, give it to the people to eat. And then the servant trusted and did so. <clears throat> For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there were some left over. Now this happened many years before Jesus came. This is like a foreshadowing of what was going to happen later on. This multiplication of food Give it to the people who are hungry. Now when Jesus comes, much later, as we read in the New Testament, what happens? Remember last Sunday, we talked about Jesus going to a faraway place, and the people followed him, remember? He was not able to be alone, see? And then he had mercy on them, he had compassion on them, because they were like, like sheep without a shepherd like a flock with that shepherd. And he was their shepherd. He became their shepherd. See? And we said last Sunday, a shepherd is the one that takes care of the flock, protects, and also uh, guides to pasture. See, his food. See, his food, spiritual food to the, to the flock. And that is what really happened here in this. Again, Jesus goes away with his disciples. And again, the people followed him. And again, the people wanted to hear him, see? And, and they knew his fame. He, had, he was curing sick. He was casting out demons. And they were coming to, they were, they were hungry, see? They were spiritually hungry. But at the same time, they were also materially hungry. And Jesus said, they were in a far off place. Those of you who have been to the Holy Land, you know, uh, Charles and Sandra, this takes place outside of the town. In a hill, in a, in a hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee. 
There was, even today, there's nothing there except for the, uh, the shrine, you see? So even today, so it's kind of a remote place, but it was more remote then. And then Jesus says, okay, let's give people to eat. See? They have come all the way out here. Let's give them to eat. He was testing. And then Andrew comes and says, oh, here we have found five loaves of, of, bre of bread here with a, uh, a kid has this five loaves of bread and the two fish. Let's do something with this. And you know, I could, I could, you, you could hear the uh, astonishment. How can we feed 5,000 people with two, five loaves of fish and two, I mean, five loaves of bread and two fish? See? But then what happens? Like Elijah said, like Elijah did. Give it to them. So Jesus does something that Elijah didn't do. He takes, he blesses, he prays, and he gives. Four verbs. He takes the bread and the fish, he blesses them, he breaks the bread, and he gives them. And there is leftovers. There are leftovers. How many baskets? Twelve. One for each disciple. See? Now let's, let us consider those verbs again. He takes what is there, he blesses it, and he breaks it, and he gives it. Those are actions, those are verbs of action, you see. And at the same time as we see Jesus doing that, we can also do that in order to get the multiplication of love in our lives. Jesus multiplied see, five loaves of bread, two fish, and fed 5,000 people with it. Now this is this is certainly a miracle. It's certainly a miracle. It's a miracle of love. It's a miracle of multiplication of love. It takes place when 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 God when Jesus expresses his divinity in this manner. Expresses his divinity as a good shepherd, he is feeding the people. And he's teaching the people how to feed themselves and others. And therefore the multiplication of love comes in. And that was in Paul that said, telling to the Ephesians, let's multiply being humble, being gentle, being patient, bearing with one another, preserving unity in faith. See? So that we can all sit together at the banquet and share with one another. Now look at this. When we take, when we take what God has given us, and God has given each one of us certainly things, talents. God has given us, He has not given us, uh, he, has, he has not let us uh, alone. He has given us things already. We have to recognize what we have. So we take what we already have from God. And then we bless it. We put it in the hands of the Lord through our own hands, then we break away from selfishness. We break away from that that hinders us going towards the other person. We break away from those attachments that we have. And then we give. See? And the miracle takes place. The giving miracle takes place. Love becomes multiplied. What a beautiful, what a beautiful example. So when we see it that way, we don't only see here a, a beautiful miracle Jesus did, but we see here something that can happen today also in our own lives. See, that can happen today also, the multiplication of love. But, if, but you, all, you know that when we come to Mass here, we are also participating in a miracle of multiplication. We are participating in miracles of multiplication here because we are all sharing here. We are all coming for, to Jesus to feed us of his own body and his own blood. And we are all sitting together at the table. 
If we were here sitting together at the table, yeah, if we are, I'm, 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 let, let's put it this way, if we are sitting here together at the table, it's because we want to share with one another. It's because we are at peace with one another. It's because we are trying to be a group of loving people. See? And remember, when we come here to eat the body and the blood of the Lord, there's a, a gesture that we do just before that that exemplifies the fact that we are trying to be here sitting at the table in peace, in unity. What is that symbol that we do? Just before receiving communion, we express that we are in the, at, at peace, that we are in, at unity, that we are together sitting at the table. What is that? What is that gesture? What is it? A sign of peace. That's one of them. We pray our Father together. The sign of peace. He gives us today our daily bread. Mm -hmm. But then they go on and mass, what we do we do? We? The sign of we peace. We give the sign of peace. We give the sign of peace. We go like this and we go like that. And we shake hands and we embrace. What, do, what is that showing? That we are here partaking at the table of the Lord. That we are at peace with one another. There is no animosity. There is no uh, bitterness here. We don't want any of that to happen. Otherwise, we will not be here. Otherwise, we have to leave. Otherwise, we have to go to that door and, 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 and stay outside until we can say that you with me. I am striving toward the multiplication of love in this world. I am part of this. Otherwise, there's no room here for you. Now, I'm speaking very seriously, right? Very strong terms. Otherwise, there's no room here for us. Otherwise, it would be, it would be a, uh, it's an empty, an emptiness. See? Only then, see, the miracle of the multiplication of love takes place. And when we come here, we are being fed. We are receiving Jesus, who has given himself for us. And we also have to pay, bless, break, and give. Right? The four verbs, take what we have, bless it, pray over it, break away from selfishness, Break away from all those things that are holding, holding you together. See? And give. See? That's what Jesus did. See? Then the multiplication of the fish and loaves took place. See? And they were left over. And when we do that, we can also have a multiplication of love in our lives. So my brothers and sisters, what a beautiful example. What a beautiful what a beautiful, uh, extraordinary message for us today. See? And we are not today in that hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee. We are in this chapel where we come Sunday, uh, Sunday, maybe in this chapel or another church, whatever. See? And we are sitting here to partake of the meal. So that outside, then, we would have leftovers as we do again. Take, bless, pray, give. And as, and as a miracle, the multiplication of humbleness, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in peace and preserving unity takes place. So may the Lord bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now uh, profess.